my coworkers. They're my audience. And I have another coworker recording me. So the title of my project is um, Breastfeed Please. And I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to present to them. And it's about breastfeeding. So breastfeed please. Okay, introduction slash problem. A major problem in my area of practice is breastfeeding. I have noticed that the Hispanic population is very active and excellent about breastfeeding. It seems to be a part of their culture and something that is understood, passed on, and encouraged as a tradition. Other ethnic groups are not properly informed about the benefits of breastfeeding. My organization is a baby-friendly facility, but our breastfeeding rates have dropped due to miseducation. Effective breastfeeding support is a fundamental component of providing family-centered care. Support and proper education is needed for moms to initiate breastfeeding and to continue to breastfeed. Now, the root cause um, problem of our breastfeeding issue here at our facility is miseducation and lack of support. I believe that the parents are miseducated about the benefits of breastfeeding and how to breastfeed, and they have lack of support from their family, spouse, and healthcare professionals. My people question for my project is, are breastfeeding rates higher for mothers who receive prenatal breastfeeding education than mothers who do not receive prenatal breastfeeding education? My personal and professional goals for my project is, as a NICU nurse, this project is very personal for me. My personal and professional expectations for this project are the same. Through this project, I hope to increase breastfeeding rates by educating moms prenatally about the benefits of breastfeeding and providing support through the process of breastfeeding. The clinical guideline that I use to support my project is the following. Well, the nurse center clinical guideline I chose is neonatal intensive care unit and women's health services department is optimal for feeding of low birth weight infants in low and middle income countries, low birth weight infants, including those with very low birth weight, should be fed their mother's own milk. And you can find the clinical guideline at the following website. I have a website on the PowerPoint. This clinical guideline should be utilized in nursing practice to improve infants and neonates outcomes by decreasing infections, helping with development, and providing infants and neonates with adequate nutrition compared to formula-fed infants. Preterm infants fed, fed, fed breast milk have a reduced risk of developing of developing infectionist diseases such as neck, upper respiratory infections, and septus. It improves brain development and lower rates of rehospitalization after discharge. So the body of evidence I use for my project is I use three um, research evidence-based projects and they were all level fours because they were all cohort studies which are normally used to look at the effect of suspected factors that cannot be controlled experimentally. For example, um, the proposed PICO question I would like to implement is the same that I stated previously but I'm going to state it again. Are breastfeeding rates higher for mothers who receive prenatal breastfeeding education than moms who do not receive prenatal breastfeeding education. These three particular research studies I use support the need for more organized breastfeeding education, support initiatives prenatally and during postpartum. In my proposal, breastfeeding rates will increase by implementing breastfeeding workshops twice a week for expecting mothers and fathers. The workshop, the workshop will inform parents about the benefits of breastfeeding, why they should breastfeed, and tips on breastfeeding. My goal is to increase the breastfeeding rate for mothers. In order for me to implement my plan, I will only need a few good committed nurses and maybe two lactation consultants. I will only get slash ask nurses that are interested and passionate about breastfeeding. My main focus is not staff nurses. I can start the workshop, workshop myself and find the resources. And when I say resources, I mean classroom, area, lactation consultants, and give the sentences. My manager and upper level directors in my organization will support my issue because the decline in our breastfeeding rates has been an ongoing problem since we received our baby friendly certification at the hospital. Change theory. As a result, I will focus the Lewin's theory of change on my patients' parents. Lewin's change theory consists of three phases which are unfreezing movement and refreezing. During the unfreezing, individuals become aware of and believe there is a need for change. The movement phase includes planning and implementing of the change. The final phase is refreezing, integrates the change into the current work environment. 
So the mothers and the parents that will be included in this project are the following. Um, mothers that are 24 weeks pregnant or greater, first time moms or moms that desire to breastfeed and fathers or spouses or significant others um, will be offered the opportunity to attend the workshop. Now, people who are excluded are moms who are HIV positive, less than 24 weeks pregnant, and taking Category D drugs and express this interest. After considering the previously stated inclusion list, I have to unfreeze mom's thoughts about breastfeeding. I can do this by asking mom's questions from my antepartum survey, which is on the next slide. Expecting moms will complete a survey during antepartum and during postpartum. I or another nurse would personally ask the expecting moms the questions from the survey while moms are in the exam room waiting to see the physician. If the expecting mothers actually attend the workshop, then they are in the moving to a new level or changing stage. The postpartum survey, which is on slide 11, will measure the refreezing outcome and how successful my methods slash interventions work. So this is the antepartum survey and it's a total of five questions. The first question is, do you plan on breastfeeding your baby? And the moms answer yes or no. And my second question is, do you know the benefits of breastfeeding? And the answer yes or no. Even if they say yes or no, I still tell them the benefits of breastfeeding. Like you save money, you can lose weight faster. It's the best slash healthiest um, food for your baby. And breast milk has antibodies that will help fight body, body infections. Um, you can wake up and just put the baby directly to your breast. And these are just a few examples. And I'm going to ask question number four only if moms answered no to question number one. And question number four says, so have you changed your mind about breastfeeding? And question number five is, would you like to attend a two-day workshop at Grady about breastfeeding? And they answer yes or no. If yes, then I'll give them the information about the two-day workshop. Now here's my postpartum survey, and my postpartum survey is completed after birth at their six-week checkup. So it's, it also has only five questions, and the first question is, do you or have you began to breastfeed? And the answer, yes or no. Do you remember the benefits of breastfeeding? If so, what are some? And I'll write the um, benefits down, what they remember. Did you attend, and I asked them, did you attend the two-day breastfeeding workshop? And the answer, yes or no. And did you learn anything from the two-day breastfeeding workshop? And yet, if they say yes, not ask them what they learn. They say no, I just circle no. And do you have any questions or concerns about breastfeeding? And if they say yes, then I'm going to answer the questions or their concerns that they have about breastfeeding. And summary, okay. Early breastfeeding education for parents along with support will increase breastfeeding rates. Infants are not being breastfed for a number of reasons, but the top two common denominators Evident from the three research articles used in personal experience are miseducation and lack of support. Education about breastfeeding needs to start prenatally and continue after postpartum. When healthcare care professionals encourage breastfeeding with rationales, then physically assist moms if needed. Mothers will consider breastfeeding or continue to breastfeed. Breastfeeding rates can increase with organized interventions. And the reflection from me doing this project is some of the best things a nurse can do for his or her patients are educate and advocate. Evidence-based research is needed to implement change in any healthcare organization. That is the only way nurses can support any need for change in healthcare. Nurses must first evaluate the need for change, then execute an action plan to implement the change, then present the evidence-based research to the appropriate parties, who it, they could be your direct supervisor, nurse manager, or whoever. Change is not always necessarily the easiest thing to do, but it is needed for better patient outcomes. With that being said, some resistance from staff members should be expected. Evidence-based research will continue to aid in overcoming the barriers to change. When nurses provide patient quality care, which is evidence-based research, outcomes in clinical practice is always better, and that is the optimal goal of nursing. And these are my references, and that's it. Very good. Okay.